So this is PA, and today we will look behind the scenes of my song Mind Control and how I in generally create my music within 8 hours in total every week to give you 2 minutes and mostly 25 seconds a little glimpse of what goes on in my head. We have to start directly with my voice today. Do you recognize it? It's very, very familiar because it's the same sound you have in every of my songs. Thankfully, my Rode Studio microphone helps me the most to get the most out of my voice. And to record that, I need a program where I can rely on, which is simple and which allows me to adjust everything I need to have the perfect base to implement it then into the program Fruity Loops. And for this matter we need Outer City. Outer City is a very, very old program. I don't want to lie. I don't know how old it is. Let's check that out. How old is Outer City? Let's see. So Outer City is made in the year 2000. So as you can see, this program is with me my whole life and since day one, since I create music. So before you ask me now, why the hell didn't you record directly in Fruity Loops? I have many reasons for that. The first is, when I want to record in Outer City, it's very simple. And as you can see, it allows me to see if I'm too loud or if I'm too When I record something like that, it allows me one thing more. It's natural, it's very, very human to breathe in between sentences. But that breathing can destroy vibes. And stupid people buy for 1000 euro something programs to minimalize these kind of parts. So, and before I tell you why that's not necessary, I will show you how you can do that for free and very, very simple. So first we have to see that breathing in between and it's very, very easy because you can zoom in very, very, very close. And when we analyzed where that breathing is, let's check on that. I make it louder for you so you can hear it. So that's how it sounds. First of all, it doesn't sound very bad, but when you hear it together, it's very simple. And as you can see, it, that sound can destroy a fucking good tune in very, very minimal seconds because that breathing goes into the subconscious. And to avoid that effect, we just localize it on every second. And then we simply mute that part. And when we do that, it sounds like this. Very simple. And as you can see, it it's a way. It sounds a little chopped, but we will fix that later. That's for me the main reason to use Outer City. When I record something and I'm totally good with that and I like what I hear, I don't use effects. I don't use, I don't know, whatever we have here. I don't use all of that. All I want from Outer City is my raw sounding audio. When I have that, I simply create a wave feel. So, and when I do that, I have a folder for everything. I put things very, very organized in a folder. And these, for example, now don't get shocked, is everything ongoing in that little two minutes and 19, as you can see, in my song Mind Control. And what is all of that? Let's check on that. Let's put it into Outer City. That's the original vocals. That's how the song sounded in a raw version. Let's check it out. You think you understand. You believe so many things. Okay, see? There's not much difference to the version you have on the song, on the final song you hear. Using Auto Tune using pitch correction, 
Using all of these things is very, very beautiful, but it destroys a vibe. But what I want is to have a authenticity and how funny it is, our city is authentic. Because everything we have or we record with Outer City is a total 100% clean version. And when you record in Fruity Loops, you have a natural kind of pitch control over that lyrics. And that's something I don't like. This is the first vocal, the main and the loudest vocal. This year is the vocal supporting the first vocal because it's the same but a little let's say a little more on the back that's the second vocal i record is always like putting my head like this a little more away from my microphone and together these both have a volume together which i mostly don't have to adjust anymore i have here these things which you get on your subconscious but you don't recognize really that little details i love to put in to just give that vocals a little extra spice burn down t can you see i just take some parts of my lyrics and give them a little extra glow that's what we do here or that's what we have here with vocal three and now let's see what's in vocal four damn, 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 damn. me sees flames so this year what i did here is a manual reverb why <laughs> I am stuck to my process now for over 20 years and a manual kind of reverb is something you have under control. When I have a program, doesn't matter Fruity Loops or whatever, Cubase, you don't have that reverb under control and mostly it floats into the next word starting directly on the second where the reverb is still ongoing. You can adjust that for parts, but I don't want to have 50 automations running into my program, taking my time to adjust every part. I just want to have total control about that kind of parts and that's why I I always have that kind of things recorded separately and how I hear them when I wrote that song which gives me totally control about the vocals. I'm a very organized person. I have everything here. When I create an instrumental I have everything in folders and I just that helps me later because I can show you quick what I created that year. These are all the songs I created this year so far. And when I mark them, you can see it's just 40 this year. So, and on that comes like, um, not Alphato, that's wrong here, because Alphato was released last year. Um, what you can see here is one song every week, one song every week. Before we can write the lyrics, and before we can record in Outer City, we just have to make a beat. So, and for that, let's check out what I did with Mind Control. So don't get shocked, but it is reality. Can I make that smaller? Yes. This is how Mind Control looks in my Fruity Loops. Here are that four vocals I showed you, and as you can see, I'm not even, I'm not only muting that breathings in between, which are not here anymore, as you can see, because when I saved an outer city, I just saved the version without breathing. I chopped that part again just to make that fit in timing. Because there's one thing you should know about Outer City. You have always one second delay to the place where you want to have that vocals. And to avoid to cut in Outer City and cut here again, I just put it in here and cut it here into the place I want to. And Outer City 
works in patterns, you know, and one pattern is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You can change that for sure with just putting things into different times. But the thing is um, that to use that for four when you're a beginner or when you just want to have total control is the best way to make a song because the most songs you like are in that rhythm and not somewhere else. And most people when they record, they have their voice here and then the next voice here and then they have it like in between then here something that makes things so hard to collab with someone because when a other person has a program like this they just import the data have it here like like that you know wait that was wrong like that and then you have like here all that audio and then you start chopping and chopping and chopping and get the fuck annoyed because the person singing doesn't take that one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Fruity Loops came with the help to get that. You know, let's check that out. This is a metronome, you can see. And this is something always used in music and always should be be used in music so and when people use these kind of things they are always on time and allow themselves to be on key as well imagine you sing something with a delay of three seconds then you're off key automatically so just using the basic mathematics of making music allows you to make a good song just have that in mind it's all mathematic Let's go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You know, that's how it works. And that's a basic rule. And when I want to sing a little before or introduce the key before, I should make sure that the key is hold on the moment I want the instrument to start. I'm not quite sure if things like an iPad or I don't know if there's any help to get that patterns correct. And I'm not talking in, I don't know, people are talking in bars, okay? Um, a bar is that. This is one, two, three, four, again. And a pattern is one. So, and you can cut one into what? Into two. So you can have one, one, and then a whole one, or you can have like one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, it's basic mathematic in here. And to be honest, I'm very bad at mathematics, but when there's something I understand, it's the simple rule of how to make a song work in handshake with all the instruments you want to have in behind of the vocal just to make them glue together because what is mastering mastering is to glue something together you don't need expensive fucking gear for that sorry you don't need to watch tutorials and everybody talking about that shit you know everything you see here is something i never paid for only fruity loops and to be honest i get that as a birthday present so i didn't even spend one cent into the things i use while making music and with time i just bought some some stuff but only necessary things like a microphone or or audio interface or whatever but please do me a favor when you like a pa song you know that my songs have energy and that energy doesn't come from my gear the energy comes from me following the basic rules of how to make a song. Now, let's check the importance part, I think. The vibe you maybe love or not. The vibe which makes you sad or happy. Music should be split into two big topics. The one is the conscious version you hear on your headphones is always the voice and kind of half part the lyrics when you hear somebody sing you just first get into if you like that voice if you like that harmony like the voice color if you like like the mix in general but um this is something your subconscious does 
but what you really hear is that person and what it, what that person is singing. So the voice is your conscious part and the beat in behind is the subconscious. So when people write, oh, I like that beat, I smile a little mostly because you can't like that beat. It's not possible. It's you like the mix. You like the conscious working with the subconscious together and that it should fit. You like the fit of that both, but you can't like a beat. You can like an emotion in that. You can like the meaning of that song. But when people say, I like that beat, I always have to smile because that's something a real musician would never say. <laughs> a real musician says, I like the mix. And it's because of, again, the work of the subconscious with the conscious part. So before we go into the conscious part and explain more what I did here with my voice um, and show you the end result of that multi voices going on here doing the same actually, I will show you how that beat parts or why I have so many, I think like kind of 10 layers, let's check that. I have in my song like without the vocals, 11 layers ongoing. And from that 11 layers, <laughs> I have three drums ongoing. Let's check on them. So I can play the whole song with that button, but I can play the pattern I created here with that. And so I have here um, a sec, um, like a sequencer, and it sounds like this. I love that. Do you hear that delay? This is a delay I love because it's a controlled delay. Look, having things under control is, again, kind of mathematic because I don't want that to do this. That's nothing I like. But I like the synthesizer doing these kind of things. So I have a sec here and I write everything on piano, like as you can see, and that's real because I can change very quick the instrument and one into whatever I want to. And that's why I mostly start with a grand piano and then I just replace that grand piano with something I want. And in that case, It's something I not mostly do, but it is that I have um, two octaves becoming one to give me that extra energy I want that song to have. I want it to start calm and get a higher energy level with the song and then bam, explode and then goes back into silence. And to have that, I have to create three kind of instruments which are sounding like one together. And this is how the sec, like one of that instrument sounds. Do you hear? It's just going like, bam, bam. It's just like a supporter, you know? For me, this sec is just a supporter of the main. Um, the sequence are called cars. And I love to use it. I love to use Search XT. So I can really, really prefer that to everyone having Fruity Loops to download Search XT in the latest version. It sounds a little overwhelming, but when you just work with it time by time, you understand that you can um, adjust very much things and you can just control totally like how it came out. And I don't want to do that right now. <laughs> so I'm just going back to basic. Um, this one, now you will laugh a little because it's no magic. It has, like we had before the octave combining and now we have like the real octave we want to have, the fourth octave, and we just go by that. <laughs> So this sound you hear in the beginning of the intro and this sound is the real 
thing, like the focus, the lead instrument of that song. And how does it sound when we play it together? So we go to that sack and we just recreate. So let's see. Do you hear the difference? It sounds now more badass. It has like, it has that crispy whatever, like, I want to kick your ass kind of thing. Just with that little detail to add a second sequencer and make him do the work in the back. Just simple as it is. Why? Because this sequencer, the first we heard, had that little kind of bassy outro fading into the next note, which creates with the second sequencer we heard a whole one. And that's something which I call manual mastering. When I have an instrument where I feel like something is missing, and it sounds kind of too high for me in the ending, or it doesn't have that volume I want it to have. But I don't want to make the instrument much louder because I don't want to ruin the general mix. I add a second instrument supporting that to create a supporting system around the keys I want to have behind my vocals. And now we came to the tricky part. This thing here is not even only calling monster feedback, it really does that. So, and it's again in Search XT, my favorite kind of help when I create music. And it's just a simple FX effect. But yeah, it's very interesting what happens when we go back to chorus. Wait, let me check which one it was. It was nine. So it's very interesting when we now go back to cars and we go now to the nine and we just add and we just add the monster FX. Let's see how it sounds now. Now we have a fucking badass kind of danceable guitar created out of a synthesizer just with an FX effect on it without playing a real guitar and without just putting in samples and all that kind of shit just taking us time and we don't have time we want to have a finished good sounding quick song which is maximum four hours to create and um that's how we can make things faster you know that's what I always think making a song and when we now go back, back to that first sequencer and we want to add this thing here again too, then we have like the whole support system ready for the chorus and now look how it sounds. You can't hear the difference. It sounds much more glued. It sounds very full. It sounds like a full automation going on in the back and being fancy and whatever, but it's just simply that three instruments working together and becoming one whole. And because I'm PA and I don't like normal things, I like to have, you know, that kind of special whatever, just waking you up just to make you really listen to what's going on in that song and to have that I just have Doomsday it's a kind of bassy synthesizer again it's no real bassy but it's kind of bassy I don't know if it makes sense right now but that kind of bass allows you to give you that extra boom you know that kind of energy boost you need when you make a cloud to tune <laughs> You can't hear that. It's like the cloud grooming and throwing its thunder on you. And you just say, oh, go on, fuck you off. I just want to beat you down. That's like, you know, that fight music, that kind of fight effect. I love to have in every kind of PA song. It's mostly somewhere in the back. 
you will not mostly recognize it instead of I want to have it in the front. These kind of things are always going on in the back of my songs. So let's listen again. Can see. So, you know, kind of things like Doomsday. Um, allow me to um, bring reality into the existing of the cloud of doubt and to give it a own voice, give it a own own kind of lead instrument into its hand to have like a real fight ongoing in that instrumental itself because every of my songs is just simply a mirror image of how it feels inside to battle yourself and to have these kind of facts in the back allow me to give back that mirror image into reality and to create a moment where you can feel deep in your bones that I'm not lying when I say it exists because this sound gives you that feeling that it's next to you and the cloud of doubt never sleeps it's always above your head and it's above every fucking person once are trying to hide it once are trying to fight once are trying to i don't know deny the existence but the reality just like that sound is it's alive and existing now we have here the second doomsday and simply as it is it's just like i want to have on some parts and full stretched on one whole pattern just to make the cloud like um introduce itself and that's why i just stretch that <laughs> For me, stretching out Doomsday and Search XT um, gives me the feeling of getting a thunder and just surviving it alive. <laughs> so it's simply as it is, it's really that. It's for me to find ways to make an audible cloud out of the one I have in my life. And I think with that kind of thing, it was very easy to recreate that. And I'm mostly searching for these kind of effects to to give that subconscious feeling of the song a very very real fade out into the mind so now i think we needed something to dance right and as you can see again i just take in basic not even chords it's just simple notes because with that kind of automatic synthesizers I am thankfully able to have in my use, I can do things like that. Let me show you like, um, wait, sorry. <laughs> do you can hear it? So this is like a real note, but, um, I don't know if it's hearable, wait, just make that longer so you can get a feel of why I don't do that with that kind of synthesizers. That's why, that's exactly what I mean with having control about the reverb and about the hall some synthesizers have caming like in their basic versions it's mostly hard to use them in notes so you can only do that you just take like the middle of the note and say or you just like you no know, or you just go by that which i admit doesn't give you the room to add details to it. It just gives you the possibility to have the lead keynote, like opener, and then you just go by that. But um, 
It wouldn't be a PA song without a synthesizer because I'm obsessed with synthesizers. For me, it's the future guitar having synthesizers. I'm totally going with Björk by that. She knows that years ago that um, electronic music will have a very, very high face someday. And when you clearly listen to the most of your favorite Spotify playlist songs, um, you will recognize There are so many synthesizers ongoing, very low frequent. It's for me very funny to see that what I thought over 10 years ago, man, synthesizers, they will be become big, you know, they will become society able is happening right now. So, and here I have um, Again, a part where I just wanted it to glow, you know, just like giving me like kind of creep vibes. For me, it's like to take one of my main sequencers and just write them in a grand piano, then replace them with a sequencer I think would fit from the vibe. And then, um, quickly after that, I go directly to write the bass because um, the bass is that part making your body move. It's the most important part of a song and the most underrated because I know that they're kind of programs automatically generating bass lines when you give in lead keys. I don't do that. I just give that space of the song the respect it deserves. For me, that's a good sounding bass. It's full of energy, but it's not dominating the beat. It's in the middle of the mix. It's not in the back, it's not in the front, it's in the middle. And you will hear soon what I mean by that. But um, a bass is married with the drums. That's the main rule. When you make music, never forget the drums. And never, you know, just treat the bass as a second option. These both are priority one, to be honest. Because when you have a good bass and you have badass drums you have like the half of the beat ready because the rest is just adding to the vibe and the rest is just to give your lead keys to give the vocals a guiding line where to follow but um i don't know man people when you make a song every instrument matters not only what you think you want to create. And that's why people making music should never try to copy somebody else's shit and never try to say, oh, my plan is I want to sound like that person. You will make one song like that and then you will stop making music. That's what you cause to yourself. You cause your cloud to get full control over your mind because making music is bleeding for the creation and giving birth to something you have inside of you and when you try to give birth to a child you didn't have inside of you you can't give birth so you will end up trying to copy something you can't copy because you don't know what that person had in mind creating it so create what you have inside not what everybody else is trying to show you and not what everybody else is trying to show in tutorials. You will never hear me saying, do the same like this. This is my process. It works for me. It works for Cloud Faded Music and it has a very, very, very clear goal. That's why it's created. But it's not something I would like to see somebody else do because this is my child. I give birth to it. I created it. I sit here hours sleepless. I go the next day sleepless to my daily job to pay me to buy me bread because my music doesn't pay me. So you can like what you hear. You can try to learn something out of that or try to check on your own process with that. But you can't be 
what somebody else is. And instead of watching people speak and speak and speak about mental health and try to raise awareness by speaking about it, it's something I refuse to support. Because mental health is something where speaking has a limit. Oh, I do mental health. Oh, okay, I do that tomorrow too. It, it's not a content. It's a problem and it's a real thing. And it's something everybody struggles with. And it's something where the real awareness comes from waking somebody's mind up. And that's why Cloud Fighter Music is calling Cloud Fighter Music and doing exactly that. That's why I have that subconscious and conscious part building together one to make you have the time you need on your headphones to think about yourself. I don't want anybody to say that's cool, that's dope, that's whatever. For me, my dream is to hear that people say it changed my life to hear that one sentence she said to work on me that's what for me mental health awareness really is when you do it the right way and when you do it with the right intentions it's very good that everybody's speaking about their clouds and it's very very good that everybody trying to do really something but it's Sorry, it's just something. It doesn't do a thing. When you talk about things, you talk about it and the other person having PTSD, having depression, having anxiety, something like that, is sitting simply there and thinking, wow, she get it out. He get it out. Man, they made it. I can never made it. I can never be that strong like that people sitting in front of that camera, talking about things while walking, talking about things while sitting somewhere. I can be like that persons. And with making that videos, you cause people to stop their own process. And it's something where I want to use that video to give real awareness about. When you starting to do something with the negativity life caused you people around you caused you ignorance and ego caused you that society damn fucking caused you then you're on the right track because you use that negative experience to create something great out of it and that's cloud fighting that's doing something for your mental health because it's a domino effect when you're able to create something where you're good at It gets you on a level where you feel bulletproof, you feel unbeatable, you feel strong. And that strong feeling comes from that thing you created and it goes directly into your daily life. Because you manage to create something so you can manage to handle your problem and you can manage to see yourself And everything else from the bird's perspective to simplify it and get it done. That's what real work on mental health looks like. It's not talking, it's not teaching, it's not preaching. It's being an example of how it's done. And when I do a song every week, finish it no matter how I feel, you only see a side of me I want to share. You don't see the real full 100% me, you see the side I want you to see from me, but my cloud, my cloud sees me every day and sees my tears and sees the sleepless nights and sees my struggle to combine making what gives me fuel while trying to earn money to buy myself bread. And this death dance I have to think about every day. There are a handful of people counting on me and on the other side, I have a handful of people trying to know me and I have to make a bridge between that while I try to earn money just like everybody else with my daily job. And that's why, for me, time is key. And when I'm able to create that things in four hours, and then put another four hours on it 
to master it and to make a music video. Then I have in total eight hours to create a song and a video and with that a finished cloud fighter every week, which cost me my whole weekend. When I do all these things, I have not even one day off and now in total for four years. So when people trying to talk about mental health, I sit here and ask myself, how do you help these people? For everybody watching this video right now, you're watching it because you're kind of interested in how I make that song, but you watch it more because you want to understand how a person speaking about the cloud of doubt can create that in such a fast time and that every week and then having the goal in mind as every musician to over deliver yourself. I do it because I feel the call inside of me to do that simply as it is. And that's why being yourself is the only key for making music. So we have our badass bass drum, which should be now get married to the drums. This year is a combination of drum and bass. So it's an automatic synthesizer, which allows me to build a bridge between the sequencer, the synthesizer and the drums with just being a little in the middle, but in the back, we need a support to get that rhythm. And it's simply like that. So we know when we can go. One, two, three, four, you know? So we can just have that part. And it's a bass drum doing the same like our metronome. So it's not necessary, but I like how it sounds when I have a fat kick. We need on it this year. I take a drum machine for that. Because I want like rhythm in the back and I want to complement it by this. And this is what I wrote. This is an automatic um, sample kind of thing. And then I have that kick and together we have like um, a really great working drum set. Because of we have like that extra kick which is for sure in that part, in that part as well. But together, these three building a hole again. So as you can see, simplified set. I have a set of sequences becoming one with being used wisely to give an extra vibe. And then we have the real synthesizers, which are being adjusted for the parts that were used and then becoming one together as well. And we have like a synthesizer to glue all that together with just being low in the back to create that kind of spooky, creepy um, vibe people have when they have a creep around them, like the biggest monster you can find under your bed is your own cloud of doubt. And to symbolize that and to, and to view it as a mirror, as a mirror image and to, and to, um, recreate that in a song, this is necessary with the doomsday as well to have that kind of effect. And now, Ladies and gentlemen, we come to the part how that beat sounds.
to the video you're watching right now because it's very cool to show you in a visual that um, how it gets glued together because of the colors I can show you very very good how it gets glued like the things I talked before how it looks and how it came on together like this but we are still not ready because first I didn't show you what I did with the vocals and the second is I didn't show you how I master that. Vocals can sound good together or can sound shitty together. And first I will show you, for that I will turn off the beat, um, how that vocal would sound when it would be only recorded once. You think you understand. So. In that vocal, I have on, sometimes I try things that I don't like and then I turn them off, an equalizer. I have Maximus. Um, Maximus is a program which will help you master very, very perfectly um, because you have that clear master version and when you put it, I will show you later what it does. But to master with Maximus is the half way of the work. I limit frequencies. Um, I can show quick that I just kind of um, chop um, out like the middle parts, the high parts. Like, um, wait, there's a way to show you. When I just, um, like, yeah, like a three kind of band split. This is something I don't take from that preset I do it by hand just to make sure I have the bass on the right line I just have my voice more in the middle and um, get my higher parts louder because I have a natural very very bassy voice and when I would put that here louder then it wouldn't it would sound like shit to be honest so for my voice that's the best way to work and to make that happen I'm using that limiter and just um, checking on the frequencies and just adjusting. And before that, for sure, I'm just using an equalizer. I'm on that part a little lazy. I just adjust that a little by hand how I need it. And that's all what I do. Because of the number of recordings, it's already a little mastered in itself. So now let me show you what happened when I turn on the second vocals. First, how does the second vocal sound? You think you understand. So and as you can hear, I have in that thing, I have a little echo in it. And as you can see, I have no power to control that echo. I can only say, okay, we can make it wetter and then we just have like, I don't know, a full catastrophe in the song because rule number one in delay, less is more. Because when you have too much delay and you have maybe a hall effect or something on that, it doesn't function. And the more important, not stereo. Because when we add a stereo effect later, these both will collide and would make that song sound like underwater. And to avoid that effect, we just make always, like I do it like that, the delay in mono. Because in stereo, cool, yeah. You think you understand. But only for that moment, in the completely final mix, it would destroy everything. So let it on mono. And now the magic. What happens when we play them both together? You, you think, think you understand. understand? It sounds like I had used a 1000 euro mastering tool and would be that stupid to give out that money for a software which can never be that good like a real producer from Sony or Universal or whatever. We are not hit makers, we are musicians, we are self-signed. And this, what I do, that little trick comes very close on that. But 
it can never be sound so glued and so perfect like on radio without having the professional next to it because the production and the gluing of a song and every of its steps is a weeks, days, month process in real big music studios. And to try to aim that high, to try to recreate like mastering as an art in itself from somebody doing that for over 30 years is naive. So What can you do when you want to make a song sound good and kind of radio able? You can support yourself with building a little support system. You can use automations in your software to say, okay, on that part, I want reverb on that knot. You can do all of that fancy things, but it will never change the fact that you can't reach to have a production being made in a $1 million dollar studio with having that simple kind of things. So please don't, don't think you can aim higher in quality than that because that is the maximum. And for everybody else giving out so much money to have a mastering tool, I'm very sorry for your family's loss of that money. It's not necessary. Pick out what's free and start with that till you get better. I think spending money, can you, you can do that later when you know exactly what you want and when there's something you dream of. But as you can see, to have a vocal master includes a little delay the way you want it in mono in a second vocal, which is Not this loud, like the one, there's a difference. I can show you when I make it bigger, can you see it? This one is a little less than that one. It's a very small difference, but it's there. And this small difference makes it sound like this. You think you understand. You believe so many things. So now we have the base of that vocals and we want to have that special kind of crispy, like, you know, that kind of fight intention in that vocals, but being passive aggressive and to have a passive aggressive kind of PA tune, you just have to add a little extras. So how does it sound when we add now our little extra? You think you understand. You believe so many things. Why are you stuck? Do you heard it? It's just giving that stuck because when you're mad at somebody and you say, damn, you're stuck, you just go higher with your voice, right? Because you go higher with your voice because you feel aggressive in that moment and you want to just give that word an extra kick just to show that you want to be respected in that kind of discussion you have maybe with someone. And To have that same kind of feeling, I just add that extra, how I would say it when I'm angry, you know, like how you're stuck. And that kind of same effect gets created just by simple things like that. And so now I want to have my little kind of mono reverb I recorded in the beginning of the video and want to glue again that vocals together. And for that, We have our next and very, very important little detail to make that work. You think you understand. You believe so many things. Why are you stuck in the forest of the damned? So now, just to show you that everything we did right now, we just glued the instruments while writing them. We just adjust them. And um, we just make vocals, which are glued in them. So we have one, two, three, four parts glued in, its, in their selves. And this in their self parts became one whole. And to show you how that sounds, I will blend in now the instruments like just like step by step. In the forest of the damned. Doomsday. The 
darkness is in me I know nobody sees I make a doll of tears and pour it into flames No patience No perspective Damn no money No goals That's our society Down With our society Let it burn Down Our society Light a cigarette And watch the world burn Down Down All the sanity No patience No perspective Damn no money No goals That's our society Down With our society So can you hear it? It's already sounding great together But because I am a perfectionist I'm still not happy with that So, when I'm ready with making a song, I just go by, like, oh, we have it already here. I just go by Maximus. Maximus is the wonderful tool Fruity Loops has to offer for you. Because it does, like kind of the job an expensive mastering tool does. Let me demonstrate. You want to have punchy drums, right? You just click on that and you can see like the smooth part gets like chopped into a harder part and when you have make that smaller when we have the clear master we have a bass and you can use transparent as well but it will cut off your bass so we will stay with clear master and now all we have to do is to listen and to demonstrate that I will not show you all the instruments let me just show you that one in the forest of the damned take this one when it comes <laughs> can you hear it sounds on the water again Let's take that as pattern. Gets a little easier for us. Was it not that? Hey, where are you? Can you hear it? The bass was still there. But on the punchy drums, it sounds like drowned. And that's because the punchy drums make the low parts louder than usual. You can see it here. It's like on 9 dB. It's very, very high. And um, not common for the song we have here right now. So when we go on clear master, you can wait. Yeah, so when we go on clear master, we see that it's still again that high, but it's kind of fade into that level, which makes that drums or that kind of bassy sound sound low, like, you know, like kind of good for the moment. So... But we're not happy with that, right? It still sound weird. So what do we do now? Like logic wise, remember what I, where is it? So when I split frequencies, then I allow the beat to breathe and come back together as perfect mix. That's how it seems here, okay? But it's not like this in reality. You have to do a lot more for that effect. But when we have Maximus, 
we have that kind of same separation. So, and all we have to do right now is to make the middle a little higher, just a little, just like, you know, it's like a little salt more into your soup. And on the high parts, we take out the chop, we make them louder, and we just give them more dB, like kind of extra push. And the general master now, you have like the general master, like the outcome of that three, we will take that a little down, just a little. Like, you know, just a little, not much, just a little. So now we play again. Do you heard it? So that's how it can sound when you just play around a little with that. When you're still not happy and say, oh, come on, that clear master is too bassy for me, you can go in transparent and then you can see it splits it like in the colors like here. You have like with yellow, you have high, you have mid and you have low and you can, can I make that bigger? Fortunately not. <laughs> um, you can just um, see what's going on here. Like here's the frequency being played for you. Here's like like a zero dB, like the middle of, of the shit. <laughs> and um, that's how it sounds when you just take transparent basic settings. Can you see that? They're not rich. being that red color away we've adjusted that so let's play again so this is a beautiful way of fruity loops to support your master beat because mastering means you have the high the mid and the low in a glued version being separated into the left ear and the right ear, which we call, everybody's calling that stereo. That's what you, you, you know that word, but you never think about what it really is, right? So stereo is that combination in here, that gluing together, giving out on the right and the left ear, on the right, on the left speaker, and to adjust that and say, I want to have the low parts only on the left speaker, or I want to have the highs only on the right or just like a little on the on the left that's mastering that's all that's the magic it's eq it's um having a control which i have with maximus and to make it stereo so now comes the magic the last but crucial part um we can't skip that because it's too important I don't put a stereo in general on the master, like on all instruments. I put it on some instruments. I put it, for example, on the bass. I put stereo on, on um, one of the middle instruments and so on. So as you can see, we have part one, part two, part three and part four. And in every of that parts, I have one to two instruments having a stereo on them. The rest stays mono and the rest stays in the middle of the speaker. And I have that same here. And which came out is a final master being in the frequency it should. You can see, let's play that again and get um, our eyes on that part here. All right. So we go back and we just play that song again. See that? It's loud. Yeah. 
Do you saw that when I put the volume off, it just had more space to move? Then it's correct. When it's wrong, it looks like this. You know, when it came too close to max, then it sounds horrible when you play it after. So always make sure you're like, like that things moving on here, you just go like till the middle kind of thing. Because of the adding of all that instruments together, this thing will already go into the end. But when one is doing that, then it sounds like underwater as well. So as you can see now explained in that long video, it is not simple to make a song. It is a ear thing. It is a mind thing and it is a value thing and a goal thing. So it always depends on what you want to do with that, you know. And what I want to do with my music is to delete that mind control. And that's why that song is calling like that. I want people to think about, especially, there's just like one part, if it's, from the subconscious part of the song or if it's from the conscious part of the song. I want people to think about this. Patience. No perspective. Then no money. No goals. That's our society. You know, that's unfortunately our reality. Our society, especially the younger generation, kind of something between 20 and 30, have no clue about what they want from life, where their life should go. They trying to know everything and they act like they know everything already and they see everything already. But to be honest, you don't have a clue about anything. You didn't go through the ways we go through and we didn't have a clue about anything as well because we didn't know what our parents go to. It's the cycle of life. It's it's the, the, the problems of the generation we have to cross. But there's one thing, only your generation, Gen Z, I'm so sorry, but I am freaking don't understand you. Every other generation had a goal. They had patience and they had money kind of way. But when I go to my daily job and hear things like, I don't know what to become. I don't know if I want to sit here for 10 years. I know that all these influencers are doing one video, two video and earning much shit. You know, when that one girl on my job said that, I was like, <laughs> you know what? I know better than you. I know it's a fucking 24 hours job and it includes so much like having a beat, having everything. Like, you know, it's the same with making music. Like mind control is my middle finger to the generation being young right now. Having no clue about their future. Don't trying to adjust their future. Being powerless in front of every decision being made above their heads and just sitting there and yelling around instead of taking action. In my generation, we did something. I'm 35. We stand up. We just try to do some, something. We just, we saw our friends every day. This generation right now doesn't see their friends every day. They're just the whole time on the phone and hopefully seeking in this kind of videos, making them kind of rethink their actions and trying to build up a new perspective. That's something I really wish for the new generation to happen. I really wish that the older generation is supporting the younger by being an example. When I see people being much more older than me doing nothing and saying they live their life and they I don't know. I really struggle with that. So it doesn't matter if you're young. It doesn't matter if you're old. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter if your fingers work. It doesn't matter if your feet are working, if your heads are working. If you have to build a house, then fuck it. It matters 
If you can look into the mirror and be honest to yourself about everything you do, you don't have to share to me, you don't have to share to anybody, you don't have to share a fucking thing about you when it's not real about you, when it's not the real you. When I do all that kind of things and I have seven days a week and I'm spending five days to earn bread and I have a Saturday and a Sunday to create this and a video and whatever the fuck to it. I'm sorry, I don't have time to watch people being ego. I don't have time to watch people making this kind of art with no goal. When I hear a song about a flower or a song about, oh, I heard that one song and I want to make the same vibe kind of thing, I don't have time for that. I'm stuck in healing myself, I'm stuck in healing other people, and I'm stuck in creating my own world. I want to care about people who are real, and this is music for real people, generated to create more real people. It's not easy. What I showed you here, broken down in a short version, took me with the music video, with adding the lyrics to the video, with recording, with every single step necessary to make that, took me in total eight hours every week. And I do that with one blow on Saturday nights. So while you sleep, I create that. And I put it out and I show myself out there. Um, I do it now four years for the right reasons. And for everybody wanting to make music, simplify your process. Find out what works for you. Find out which program you need. Find out the structure working the best for you. Find out tools can help you create things. Find out what's the best for you. And the most important I know it's hard for Gen Z that days to, to make clear what they want and what not, you know, because they still don't know what their life should look like in five years. The most important is take care of what you say. Don't use music or art in general to talk about sex, to talk about drugs, to talk about all that satanic shit already going on in the charts. And I will show you where I come on that. Let's see the billboard charts. Top 100. When I talk about satanic, let's look at that. This song from Taylor's Calling Slut. We have Doja Cat with Paint the Town Red, which is officially, like the video says, everything. And the words for sure too. Vampire. Wildest Dreams, like just the titles, we didn't listen to the song, right? Just go greedy. These kind of songs, just by title, show you that the industry is evil. Big ones in the back. People wanting to make money in first priority. You will aim for the wrong gold. You can be as talented as you want it. Michael Jackson died because he wants to get his art back. They killed him. They killed him for wanting his copyrights back. You know, so what I want to show you with that is that you should care about what you say and that you shouldn't try to make the shit you saw right now just by title. Do something good, give people perspective, give people a reason to build goals, try to change our society. Don't try to be like the society, that's what music should do. And I hope this video shows a behind the scenes as you wished from me to get. On the other side, a deeper meaning of the power of music. Oh yeah! Oh yeah!